Thunderstorms can pack a pretty good wallop, not only in the damage that they can do, but thunderstorms can spawn tornadoes and trigger flash flooding. Regardless if one or all three of these hit our area, are you prepared to weather the storm? When severe weather threatens our area, you need to be aware of the alerts posted. These alerts come in the form of a watch or a warning. Severe thunderstorm watch tells you when and where the storm is likely to occur. Severe thunderstorm warning is issued when thunderstorms have been reported. Tornado watch indicates conditions are good for tornadoes to occur. You will need to be alert and listen to weather reports for updates and warnings. Tornado warning. This means a tornado has been sighted or indicated by weather radar, and you should take necessary precautions and seek shelter immediately. Flood or flash flood watch. This indicates flooding is possible. Again, you will need to listen to weather reports and be prepared to move to higher ground. Flood or flash flood warning. Means flooding is occurring and you need to seek higher ground immediately. Severe weather can be life-threatening but here are some things you should know and can do to protect your family during a thunderstorm. If you can hear thunder, you're within striking distance of lightning. Seek shelter immediately. Get inside your home, a building, or a hardtop vehicle. Remember that, despite a popular myth, rubber sole shoes and tires do not protect you from lightning. When in your home, secure the outside doors and close the windows, shutting blinds, shades, curtains, or shutters to block shattering glass or debris from strong winds. Avoid showering or bathing as plumbing can conduct electricity. Use cordless or cellular phones to make calls. A corded phone should only be used as a last resort. Unplug appliances and other electrical items as power surges from lightning strikes can cause serious damage. If you are caught outside, stay away from natural lightning rods, such as tall, isolated trees in an open area, hilltops, open fields, the beach, a boat on the water, isolated sheds, or anything metal like motorcycles, bicycles, or golf carts. Now, let's talk about tornadoes, nature's most violent storms. Winds can reach 300 miles per hour, their path of destruction can be in excess of one mile wide and 50 miles long. Before a tornado hits, the wind may die down and the air can become very still. Tornadoes generally occur near the trailing end of thunderstorms, and it is not uncommon to see clear, sunlit skies behind a tornado. Wisconsin averages 23 tornadoes a year. Peak season is from April to August, though they can occur throughout the year. Tornadoes can strike quickly and generally move from southwest to northeast. Here are some danger signs to be aware of. A dark, often greenish, yellow sky, large hail, a large, dark, low-lying, rotating cloud, and a loud roar similar to a freight train. Now, what can you do if a tornado is imminent? Seek shelter in your basement, storm cellar, or the lowest level in your home. If you do not have a basement, go to the center of an interior room on the lowest level of your home. Get under a sturdy table and use your arms to protect your neck and head. Do not open any windows. If you are caught outside, lie flat in a ditch or a depression and cover your head. Do not get under a bridge or overpass. You are safer in a low, flat location. Never try to outrun a tornado. Leave your vehicle immediately for safe shelter. Watch out for flying debris, as this causes most tornado-related fatalities and injuries. Now, I already talked about flood and flash flood watches and warnings, but what's the difference between a flood and a flash flood? 
it's actually a time element. Flash floods develop rapidly and usually occur within six hours following the end of an event and rarely last more than 12 hours. Floods, however, take longer to develop, usually occurring six hours after an event, and floods can last longer than 24 hours, even extending for several days before receding. Now, what do you do when faced with a flood or flash flood event? Stay tuned to weather reports, and if flooding is indicated, be prepared to evacuate. If you have time, and only if you have time, move essential items to upper floors, turn off main switches and valves, and disconnect any electrical appliances. But do not touch any electrical equipment if you are wet or standing in water. Be aware of streams and drainage areas around your home as they will be quick to overflow in a flash flood. If you need to evacuate, here are some things you should know about rising water. Six inches of moving water can knock you down. Do not walk through any moving water. Also, do not try and drive through a flooded area. Your vehicle can be swept away. Six inches of water will reach the bottom of most cars. It's easy to lose control and have a vehicle stall out. A foot of water, just 12 inches, is able to float most vehicles, and two feet of rushing water can carry away cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks. Always avoid flooded areas and any moving water. Have you prepared a family emergency plan? Your family may not be together when disaster strikes. A family emergency plan can describe how your family will communicate during emergency situations. FEMA offers a contact card to be complete for each family member. This contact card should be kept handy in a wallet, purse, briefcase, backpack, or diaper bag. This will make it easier for communication between work, home, schools, and daycares. The contact cards are downloadable at FEMA's website at www.ready.gov and copies are available at the West Dallas Health Department. Also, keep in mind that text messages can often get around network disruptions when a phone call might not be able to get through. This is another way to stay connected with your family. Besides property damage, severe weather can also cause power outages. Again, these outages can last for several hours or several days. If faced with a power outage, Ready Wisconsin and FEMA recommend having an emergency kit on hand with enough supplies to last three days. Your kit should be kept in a designated location so it's ready when you need it, and your family should know where it's located. Here's what you should have in your kit. Water. Plan on three gallons per person for drinking and sanitation. Non-perishable foods such as crackers, whole grain cereal, peanut butter, granola bars, trail mix, canned foods like fruit, vegetables, meats, juices, milk, and soup. Also include some treats like cookies, hard candy, and lollipops, a can of Sterno to heat up food items, a manual can opener, makes it easier to open those canned food items, a battery powered radio, flashlight with extra batteries, sleeping bags or blanket for each person, a first aid kit, prescription medications and eyewear, paper cups, plates and towels, plastic utensils, moist towelettes and garbage bags, a change of clothing, shirts, pants, socks, underwear, shoes and outerwear in cold weather, cash in small denominations, change or traveler's checks, credit cards, copies of important documents like identification, bank records, and insurance policies, and keep them in waterproof containers. Matches, also kept in waterproof containers, pliers to use to turn off utilities, chlorine bleach, where by adding one part of chlorine to nine parts water, you have a disinfectant, books, games, puzzles, paper and pencils, fire extinguisher, and a whistle to signal for help. Those are some general items, but if you have a baby, you're going to need some more specific ones, like formula and bottled water to mix it, baby bottles, diapers, disposable wipes, medications, bath towels and a washcloth, cotton swabs, 
diaper rash ointment, and baby toys. And for your pets, you'll need ID tags, food, drinking water, cat litter and pan, leashes and pet carriers, medications and immunization records, towels and blankets, the name and phone number of your veterinarian, and pet beds and toys. Now I mentioned a first aid kit as part of your emergency kit. Now here are some items that you can put into your first aid kit. Bandages and sterile dressings, two pairs of sterile gloves, cleansing soap, antibiotic towelettes and ointment, aspirin or non-aspirin pain reliever, cold medications, thermometer, scissors and tweezers, petroleum jelly, antacid, laxative and anti-diarrhea medication. There's a lot in the emergency kit, but if you're going without power for several days, these items can literally be a lifesaver. Wisconsin weather can change rapidly, so a little preparation can go a long way. Are you prepared?